Hi, this is Paul, and I'm going to show you how to use Excel with Power BI to create a solution that allows me to use visuals from Power BI and reports created in Excel with one set of unified data. Excel is a great reporting tool that a lot of people are comfortable with and know how to use. And of course, we've had a lot of great additions made to Excel in recent years, such as Power Query and Power Pivot, but that's a separate tool from Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is based on a lot of the same technologies and capabilities, but we have a completely different set of visuals. I'm going to show you how to use them together. So as you can see, I have some projects uh, here in my Power BI subscription. Now I've used Power BI Desktop to create a Power BI project that I've published here to my Power BI subscription. And you can see that here in this workspace. So when I publish from Power BI Desktop, I get a data set, I get uh, reports that have pages with visuals on them, and you can see that I, I have table visuals and, and a matrix style visual that's sort of like Excel, but it's not really Excel. It doesn't have all of the richness of Excel pivot tables with filters and slicers and conditional formatting and a lot of those great features that we've learned to love. And then of course I have a dashboard where I can kind of stitch everything together. So what I would like to do is create an Excel report that's based on this same set of data, not a copy, but the same data, and then I would like to pin my Excel report to this dashboard. So to do that, I'm going to go to my data set, click on the ellipsis, and choose Analyze in Excel. Now what that does is it creates this ODC connection file, and I need to click Open to give Excel permission to open that on my desktop. And this actually connects it to that data in my Power BI subscription. So this is one version of the truth. This is Excel connected to my Power BI model that I've published into my subscription. And as you can see, it's actually created a pivot table here for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plan ahead a little bit. I like to give myself a little bit of white space around my pivot table so I uh, have a little more flexibility. And we'll go ahead and just create a simple pivot table I'll say that I want to see my year-to-date revenue with months on rows and let's say uh, sales regions on columns. And that's a, let's apply some conditional formatting. We'll use a color scale. I like that one. And I'll also add a pivot chart. So I can use any of the charts that are available in Excel here. Let's just put those side by side. These are based on the, the same model from my Power BI subscription. Okay. And of course, we could take some time and format that and, and uh, uh, add a lot of other richness here. But we're just going to use this simple example. Let's take away the grid lines and the headings just to make that a little look a little more like a report. Now, I could use Excel to save this directly to a OneDrive for Business or a SharePoint Online folder, but uh, just to kind of uh, separate my tasks, I'm going to save this off to just a temporary folder just so I can manage this separately and show you where I'm going to actually store it. We'll go ahead and overwrite my earlier file called Van Arsdell Report, and I'm going to close that. Now, when I set up my Power BI subscription, since I already had an Office 365 subscription and I used the same email address, my Power BI subscription is actually part of my Office 365 subscription. And even if you had just set up a Power BI subscription, you would still have uh, a OneDrive associated with that. So in this other browser window, you can see my Office 365 subscription, and I'm going to use my, the storage that comes with Office 365. Now, I could either use OneDrive for Business or I could use uh, the sites that are associated with Office 365, which is really SharePoint Online. 
We'll go ahead and choose my team site. And um, the, what you can see right here is the sh uh, shared documents library. And I'm going to upload that file that I had created with Excel. Now, like, like, like I said earlier, we could have just published it directly from Excel. But I just want to make the point again that this is just an empty Excel file with no data in it that only has those reports. So it's a very lightweight file that's connected to my Power BI model that we looked at earlier. Now, I'm going to go back to the Power BI window and I want to add that Excel file as a report. To do that, I click Get Data and I'm going to choose Files. You can see all of the different sources. We're going to use the SharePoint team site. I'll click Connect. And I know that that's in my shared documents library. And sure enough, there's the Excel file that I just uploaded. Now, when I choose an Excel file and connect to it, I have two options. I can either import a query data model and reports into Power BI and essentially move from Excel into Power BI, but I don't have any data in this Excel file. I only have the report. So what I want to do is I just want to connect to the report that lives in that Excel file. That's the second option right here. It doesn't import anything. It just provides a link. And then it puts that Excel file, you see the Excel icon right there, in my Reports menu. Now if I click on that, it will actually open this in Excel Online. So this would be the same as, as if you had just put an Excel file up into a SharePoint library or into OneDrive and click on it. It just gets rendered here in the browser. And I can actually click and interact with this data in this pivot table or pivot chart where I can filter the data and I can slice it and move things around. Uh, as an Excel user, I know how to do that. Now, this is the trick. With this sheet visible, I'm going to go ahead and highlight a range of cells. And there's a pin button over here. And when I click pin, it asks me what dashboard I want to pin that to. I'll use my existing dashboard, pin it. Then when I go over to that dashboard, go ahead and move this visual down. There's my visual. So that is like any other dashboard tile. I can place that and resize it. Along with all of my other visuals that could be visuals from a uh, Power BI report or reporting services visuals from reporting services reports on-prem. And then when my user clicks on this tile, it drills them into Excel Online where they can use the pivot table and filter features to interact with that data using Excel. So what we've seen is that Excel can be used to author reports for Power BI with one set of data that lives inside my published Power BI model. So we have one version of the truth and multiple report visuals created with Power BI or Excel or reporting services that can be used against that model.